When we talk about chemical reactions, we talk about it in two different fields. The thermodynamics of the chemical reaction, how energy changes, and how that energy is dispersed throughout the system, or the kinetics of the chemical reaction, the rate, how fast the reactions go. That's what I'd like to look at now. Chemical kinetics. Here's a chemical reaction, and we'll define the rate as the change in concentration over time. So, for instance, for this chemical reaction, zinc ions will begin to appear over time, and hydrogen gas will begin to appear over time. So the rate will be defined as the change in concentration over time of the zinc ions or the change in the partial pressure of hydrogen over time. If I plot the concentration versus time, you can see for zinc and for hydrogen gas, if I start from the metal and the hydrogen ions, those would build up over time. And if you know something about mathematics, you recognize the change in partial pressure over the change in time represents the slope of the line at a given point. Now, <clears throat> the hydrogen gas and the zinc ions appear over time, the hydrogen ions would disappear over time. So they would start at some high concentration and disappear. So if I cast the rate in terms of the hydrogen ions, then I would need two things. I'd need a negative sign, and there is a stoichiometry. This rate defined in terms of the change in concentration of hydrogen ions over time would be twice as fast as the partial pressure of hydrogen gas over time. So I have to keep track of that. But in general, what we do is we write down common rate laws. The rates, as we measure them, are proportional to the concentrations in some sense. And one common way they're determined is the rate is proportional to the first order, that is, the concentration to the first power a linear relationship between the rate and the concentration of a product or a reactant. And I'm usually talking about the instantaneous rate, the rate just when the concentration is, is set, you measure the rate, and those proportionalities exist. So I can write rates as rate is k, a proportionality constant, times the concentration. Now, that proportionality constant k is called the rate constant. And the rate constant will have units that are appropriate for the system. So the rate constant here in a first order rate expression, if I wrote the rate of the reaction in moles per liter per second, and the concentrations are in moles per liter, then the appropriate units for k, the rate constant, are reciprocal seconds, one over seconds. Now, there's Another way that rates often proceed. Rates are often proportional to the concentration squared. And here I should make an important distinction. This rate law, both of these, whether the rate laws are first order or second order, they're determined by experiment. That is, this power of 2 here and this power of 1 here are not related necessarily to the stoichiometric coefficients. The rate laws must be determined by experiment. And I make that distinction because in thermodynamics, we have the equilibrium constant k, where we do use the powers of the balanced rec uh, stoichiometric coefficients. But in kinetics, these powers are not related to stoichiometric coefficients. You have to determine it by experiment. You have to measure concentrations versus time. You have to plot them and see if they follow one of these rate laws. So here's a second order rate law. So we're saying that rates are often proportional to concentrations in some power. And we can see that. Here's, here's an example, this, this very reaction. I have hydrochloric acid at two concentrations. So I have two concentrations of H plus, And I have zinc solid. And we'll just mix six molar and one molar hydrochloric acid with the solid zinc, and we'll be able to see the production of the hydrogen gas. That'll bubble out. The zinc ions are not colored, so we won't be able to detect those. But we'll see visually that the rate is dependent on the concentration of the H plus. So let's just do that. 
Here it is, six molar and one molar HCl being added to zinc metal. And you can see six molar reacting rapidly and the one molar reacting more slowly. Now, if we could measure these concentrations carefully, we could plot them and determine what the relationship is between the concentration and the rate. And we could determine a rate law. And that's how chemical kinetics is done.